I decided to go with the Quantum Radio. It's cheap, it's like 20 bucks. It comes with a receiver. Gears. Um, I'm not going to talk about gear ratio because you really need to figure that out on your own based on the motor that you end up buying. This works out to a, I think, 2.1 to 1 ratio, but we'll see. One nice thing about these Turnigy SK, what are they, SK3 motor? This is the 320. Since it's originally designed as an airplane motor, I don't have any model airplanes, so I don't really know, but this little guy came with it in the box, and this fits on here and it bolts in so once the motor is in the plate mounted somewhere on here I'm thinking it might be possible with an extra belt modify this to be a little longer put a pulley on it and possibly get a two-wheel drive set up at it with one motor 120 amp it's a boat ESC the reason I went with this one is because, first of all, it was one of the cheapest ones. And I read somewhere on the internet that another guy had tried it with the 90 amp and said that it never got hot. So I'm not too worried about it right now. So this is where this is going to go. And that is roughly how big it is. It's about 17, 18 millimeters ish. I'm going to drill it small first because this isn't exactly round. So we're almost there. Now, I kind of screwed up when I ordered all this stuff. Originally, this was going to be a much larger pulley, but since my wheels are only 72 mil, yeah, I had to get the smaller pulley. And in doing that, I didn't adjust my belt. So I still got a big belt and I got a much smaller pulley. With a smaller smaller gear and the same belt everything gets stretched out a little longer and the annoying thing about that is that it has to also be longer which puts the motor further forward on the deck I'm not sure how necessary this next step is but since I have access to AutoCAD, I'm going to do it my way. You can do it, you can just measure it out. But, so, I need to drill holes in my wheel. Yeah, just this wheel, not wheels. So I need to drill holes in my wheel, as well as these washers I bought. And I want everything, sorry, I want everything to be as exact as possible so that when you're ripping down the road you're not getting shaken all the hell so this is what I've come up with here's the washer these are going to be the holes some dimensions dimensions from the sum the uh, center I'm going to print this at one to one on a paper size. Now these are rough. I mean, you could copy it if you like to. I copied it off a guy off the internet. It had to be modified. These were his dimensions, but I mean, depending on how big the axle is on your trucks, that's going to depend um, size hardware you use. And this hole here is going to depend on um, the motor that you end up using. I had to go a little bigger here. Um, hardware, I think that's the same size. And I ended up going a little bigger here as well. And this just works out to two inches. 
and then radius to the edge to make it look better. My plate is longer, however. This is what I printed, but because I used a smaller pulley, everything had to get stretched out a bit. For shits, this overall length, for anybody who's interested, 121. And there we have it, like magic. So, as I mentioned, it's one to one. So, so this is everything I need to drill holes in. And I must admit, I was way more confident in this before I, before actually cutting and get out of here, cutting and taping my templates to these items, but I will let you know how it goes. Here's where we're at. So everything is loosely in place. Nothing is welded. The motor is attached to the plate, however, but everything else is just sitting loosely. And what you want to do is lean on the truck basically until you get wheel bite and make sure the motor doesn't hit the deck. It can be very close, but wheel bite is worse than your motor hitting the deck. So that's what I'm basing it off of. Six cell battery done, connected them in series, soldered up a Dean's connector and lengthened the cable with 10 gauge. So I got everything pretty much mocked up right here. I got the bracket welded onto the truck. Haven't decided if the motor's gonna go this way or spin it around, have the wires come out the back or the front. Um, every, it's just sort of laid out. My original plan was to make a box out of fiberglass, which I may still do. The reason I went with this box, it was cheap, it was fast, got it at Walmart, it's a couple bucks. Does the job, fits the batteries perfectly, they're nice and snug in there. And, uh, I didn't want to make a fiberglass box and then realize I had to redo a bunch of work. So I figured this is a cheap and fast, dirty way for me to get out for uh, a test rip before putting too much work into this thing. The ESC, it's a boat ESC, so it's waterproof. So rather than put it in a container, I'm going to leave it exposed. And I whipped up some brackets that are going to hold it down. I'll put a shock absorbent pad underneath of it. Good news, it works. It's the problem. I had to make these L brackets because when you hit the gas, the torque bends the bracket and you get all kinds of slack in the belt. So it slips on the belt and it just screws up the pulley alignment. Alright, so I got both brackets on, top and bottom. I just riveted them in place. So far it seems like it's added lots of, plenty of rigidity. Well, I think that's about it for now. That's the factory setting for this ESC by the way because I couldn't figure out how to program the damn thing and when I bought it I cheaped out and didn't get the six dollar programming card which I highly recommend you do the instructions are some sort of direct Chinese English Chingrish kind of translation doesn't really make any sense and if you can figure it out Good on you. Maybe make a video and send it to me. I went with this radio because, well, first of all, I think it was like 22 bucks, so can't really go wrong with that. And also the sheer size for comparison's sake. Here's a Spectrum radio next to it. It's just massive in comparison. And I didn't want to be driving, riding this thing down the street holding this big bulky and nerdy looking radio. So I got this, kind of fits in your hand nicely. Couple complaints, 
the on off button is hopeless. I don't know if you can see, but that red light just doesn't want to turn off. So what I've been doing is I'll just pop out the battery box and then that seems to do the trick. It turned out to be the switch. The spring isn't pushing it all the way back out. Click, no click. Put a little bit of dielectric grease on it. Good to go. For your box or your case or whatever you end up um, making or buying or whatever. Assume you get two three cell batteries, hook them up in series to get your six cell um, output, I guess. For charging, you're gonna wanna get some leads, some balancing leads. Make sure they're six cell. Six S right there. And you're gonna have to um, I would recommend anyway that you hardwire one end directly to this so that you can just plug it straight into your charger because yes you could just plug these both cut one because these are each four pin and for a six cell on the panel for your charger it's gonna only it's only gonna be a seven pin so you're gonna have to sort of razor blade one off cut the wire and uh, there's instructions for that all over the internet. I'm not going to mention it in this video. But you're going to want to combine these two into one so that you're only plugging this into the charger rather than both these. Reason for that is if you put them in backwards, it's just not good. It's just, it keeps it brainless. You want to charge it, you grab this end, you put it into your balance port or the board on your charger, and you plug this in and you fire it up and you're good to go. There you have it, folks. I'm uh, right now in Canada, which is where I live. It's about minus 16 and there's snow on the ground, so I can't ride this outside in case you're wondering why I'm doing this in the basement. But uh, does the trick.